A picture, they say, is worth a thousand words, especially an embarrassing picture. Social media is ablaze with pictures of Mr. Arvind Kejriwal yawning away, putting up his hands behind his neck and exhibiting other such contortions during the Prime Minister's video meet with Chief Ministers on the fuel price hike issue. It could be said on the day when the camera caught the Delhi Chief Minister in all these poses, he might have had a late night. He was feeling sleepy during the meeting or the words of the Prime Minister so deeply touched him that his body frame considerably relaxed and we found him in all sorts of awkward poses. It could have happened that way or maybe not. Maybe the body postures were deliberate. Maybe uh, they were meant as a slight to the Prime Minister, a picture transmitted worth more than the subject matter of the meeting. I honestly don't know what Mr. Kejriwal was thinking during that moment. But the larger issue remains pertinent. Are we witnessing the arrival of a new species of the Indian politician who wears his or her rudeness as a talisman around the neck for all to see and debate about? Are we witnessing street-level political behaviour permeate the highest echelons of power play at the centre and at the states? Are we, in the name of the man on the street, witnessing the rise of the debased politician who mocks established norms, politeness, courtesy and even the basic manners to supposedly carry favour, especially in his head, with the lowest common denominator? Such behaviours have given rise to all these troubling questions and we shall debate them in a second. But first, a big warm welcome to all viewers of the CAA show in which CAA, as all of you know, is Conversations and Analysis and my name is Jaggi Basin. To join this show, press the big red subscriber button on your screen and subscription is of course completely free. Now to be fair, such Provocations by Indian politicians are not something new. The debasement of politics and the debasement of a politician's behaviour has been in the making for a long time. Ah, who can forget the debased behaviour of Sanjay Gandhi's stormtroopers during the emergency era? Post-independence, it was the first serious, crude, at times violent attempt to turn the nature of politics practice then on its head and introduced the era of street crudeness and thuggery in mainstream politics. But there is a fundamental difference between those years and what is being practiced now. The nature of street level politics being practiced now by various political entities is not so much violent upheaval and goon inspired thuggery. In the age of social media, the new practitioners rely on manipulation of images words, speech and narration to tell stories of one-upmanship, a fundamental disregard of hierarchy, a disrespect for positions of authority and last but not in the least, a scant regard for age and experience. In short, the new level of street-level politics being played out today is more psychological, attacking the mind and well-being of people rather than causing physical harm. Question to be asked is, why certain politicians and political groups resort to what I call a mannerless phase in Indian politics? Politicians deploy the strategy of being deliberately offensive in words and behaviour because in their head they feel they can quickly close the gap between their opponents, especially those that exist in a far more superior league than their own. When Mr. Rahul Gandhi says something disrespectful about the Prime Minister who is so many years his senior, or Mr. Kejriwal stretches and yawns to convey boredom, at the back of their minds they would be hoping their actions would bring them far more exposure than their opponent as the case may be. In that sense, if they are being seen to be discussed and debated upon or even reviled or criticised for their behaviour, it still resolves their purpose to be noticed or for making waves against more powerful opponents. This tactic also buttresses their claim 
that they represent the man on the street and how he behaves on the street. At least this is what they think is the case. They feel an in your face, always slightly disrespectful manner of speaking and behaving will win them more brownie points with the man on the street and close the popularity gap with powerful adversaries. So the question is, does this tactic or strategy, whatever you want to call it, work out in real life? I'm afraid the answer is no. Look at the manner, the aggression that Mr. Rahul Gandhi showed before the assembly elections. Not a day passed when he would not be calling names of the Prime Minister. And then the elections happened and Rahul Gandhi and his party were nowhere to be seen. The new entrant up, practicing this kind of in-your-face politics also needs to introspect and understand what the people really want from them. They were voted in Delhi because they surely did some good in the field of education and Mohalla clinics. They were voted in Punjab because people were desperate for stability and a better future. But AAP was not voted in for the personalized advertisements of Maan and Kejriwal at taxpayers expense or for yawning or stretching in the Prime Minister's meeting or the likes of Sisodia and many others like him rudely giving sound bites of sending bulldozers to the Home Minister's residence. The thing with all these upstart politicians is that they forget that the man on the street, the common man in India, is an aspirational person. This person aspires to one day sit on the same table as the likes of you and me. And therefore, this man aspires to rise in life for his children to speak good English, get good jobs, learn the manners of an aspirational society and be accepted in the higher echelons of society. And that is why, despite a vast young restive population, we remain a deeply entrenched, conservative, rules-bound society which respects its elders and honors tradition. The society at heart frowns upon upstart politicians who make fun of established norms and senior individuals. The upstart and the fast-track politician forgets this vital lesson and thinks his antics and loutish behavior is enduring to the common man. That thinking is a huge mistake. No doubt such politicians are noticed, but whether they are accepted is easily verified by the fate of Mr. Rahul Gandhi, who was all over the place with his blustery and sometimes offensive Twitter remarks and comments before the assembly elections. And after the elections, well, we all know the results as they turned out for him. Such is the fate of politicians who violate the time-tested norms of decency of Indian politics. But are the upstarts listening to all this? Probably not. And so on this note, I come to the end of this episode of the CAA show. And I hope you really enjoyed this episode. And if you do like our show, do subscribe to us. And on this note, it's goodbye and cheers from my